They ventured into strange lands to hunt for pelts. They were separated from their families for months at a time. They endured extreme weather and fought off disease, and even saw family members murdered and kidnapped by Indians. But they were determined to make a new life for themselves and their families in this new land. Hey, this is Scott Denny with Family Tree Nuts, and I would like to share with you the history of one of the original of the Cumberland settlements, Mansker Station. In the late 1760s and early 1770s, long hunters began to visit an area around a large salt lick and close to a body of water that would soon be known as the Cumberland River. Sometimes, spending months hunting in the wilderness, they would bring back animal hides for trade and barter. Men such as Timothy de Mumbrium, James Robertson, John Donaldson, Anthony Bledsoe, and Casper Mansker made numerous trips into this area to hunt for hides in spite of the constant threat of Indian attack. They found the area to have rich soil for crops and to be good for hunting, so it wasn't long before they made plans to return here with their families and to settle permanently. About the same time, in March of 1775, a North Carolina land speculator whose name was Richard Henderson was meeting with the Cherokee Indian representatives at the Sycamore Shoals in present-day Elizabethan, Tennessee. He agreed to purchase a large tract of land 20 million acres that was located south of the Ohio River, as down as far as the Cumberland River, and then over as far east as the Cumberland Plateau. When the agreement was done, they called it the Sycamore Shoals Treaty. But because the British Proclamation of 1763, which declared there to be no settlement west of the Appalachians, there was little chance that this transaction would be recognized as law. But Henderson ignored the British proclamation and proceeded to form the Transylvania Land Company to manage the settlement of tracts of land in this area. But as expected, the British government, along with the colonies of Virginia and North Carolina, refused to recognize the agreement reached by the Transylvania Company. Instead, though, they awarded Henderson approximately 600,000 acres for future settlement in return for his initiative in the area. So it wasn't a total loss or waste of time for him. Soon he contracted with well-known long hunters, John Donaldson and James Robertson to survey this area for future settlement. In the meantime, a faction of Cherokees known as the Chickamaugas led by Dragon Canoe opposed all land agreements and they were determined to stop the settlers from coming to this area. So, they proceeded to attack and make war on everyone. In addition, there was another challenge that they faced. In the earlier years when Donaldson and Robertson and other long hunters entered this area to hunt, they noted the difficulty of travel from the eastern settlements across the Cumberland Plateau with its steep ridges and almost impassable terrain. They decided that when it was time for their families to follow and settle permanently, they would come here on flatboats instead. Beginning at Fort Patrick Henry in present-day Kingsport, Tennessee, they traveled down the Holston River, into the Tennessee, through the Ohio, and into the Cumberland. Hey, if you're enjoying this story of our American history, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel, Family Tree Nuts. It's easy to do by clicking on this little button to subscribe and then also a little bell so that we can notify you every time we post a new story. Anyway, back to the story. When it was time for families and other settlers to follow, the first flotilla led by Donaldson consisted of around 30 flatboats, canoes, and dugouts. They left Fort Donaldson on December the 22nd, 1779, and arrived here at the Big Salt Lick, present day Nashville, in April of 1779. During the four-month trip, Donaldson recorded in his diary that they encountered Indian attacks, smallpox, hunger, exhaustion, extreme cold, and the swift currents of the treacherous Muscle Shoals. Arriving after the long 1,000-mile journey, their families reunited, 
and today we remember them as the first Cumberland settlers. Because of the threat of Indian attack, they planned for several stations or forts to be built in the area to provide for security for the locals with their farms usually being located on land right close to the fort. The most prominent stations in the area were known as the Nashboro Station, Mansker Station, Bledsoe Station, and Kilgore Station. And as time went by, new communities of settlers began to grow around each. In light of the fact that these new stations were outside of the area controlled by the British colonial government, they drew up their own guide for land transactions and simple governance. It was called the Cumberland Compact and signed in 1780 by 250 men in the area, including Casper Mansker, whose settlement we're visiting today. Casper Mansker, being a veteran of the American Revolution and also one of the early long hunters, had returned to lay claim to 640 acres that was awarded to him for his service during the Revolution. So he built his station for the settlers about 11 miles north of the Nashboro Fort. And that's where I am today, close to the original site of Mansker Station Settlement. Although the Indians burned the first fort, a second larger and more fortified structure soon followed and was built a few hundred yards from where I am today. Behind me is a reproduction of Mansker Station, and it is a good representation of what life was like on the frontier in the late 1700s. Surrounded by local farms in the area, the fort was essential for providing protection and a central location for the community. It was also the center for bartering, exchange of goods and services, and also had a tavern and inn for the travelers passing through the area. Oh yeah, and it also included a blacksmith shop where tools were made. Over time, the Indian attacks ended and new communities began to spread out all across the region rendering the stations less necessary for the defense of the local population. Here at Mansker Station, and also at Nashboro, Bledsoe's, and Kilgore Station, the foundations were laid for communities that would become known today as Nashville, Tennessee, and its suburbs, home to almost two million people. So here we are today in Gulletsville, Tennessee, at the reproduction of Mansker Station, where we remember and honor those that came before us, endured death, disease, and many hardships in order to make their way in the new world. Your ancestors and mine would soon follow too and settle here and all across America. Their stories are waiting for you to discover and all you have to do is start looking because it's out there. That's our passionate Family Tree Nuts to record our American history and hopefully motivate others like you and I to discover our own unique history, remembering where we came from, sharing it with our children, and looking forward to the future. So, I'm on my way to another place, to another story of our great American history. Remember, family tree nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.